So what are use after free vulnerabilities? Well, it's when you use data after it's been freed and replaced with hashes. So it's also known by the name stale pointers or dangling pointers. And we're going to go with dangling pointers in this class because it provides so much better analogies. So I want to show you a simple example, sort of akin to the uninitialized data access from earlier in the class. So we've got our stack over here and we've got our heap over here. And I want you to follow the bouncing star. So first thing, malloc buff1. That fills in the local variable buff1 with a pointer somewhere in the heap. Then buff1 address assigned to local variable i. So i points at the same location somewhere on the heap. Then we free buff1. Boom! And it got destroyed. So now all of a sudden these pointers right here are what we term dangling pointers because they still absolutely are pointing to this memory address. But it has been freed, and it's still gray because we didn't fill anything in. We never initialized it, never touched it. But it is, you know, disappeared. It is now no longer available for use by this code. So someone else, somewhere else on the system could be using that memory. Of course, again, this is just super trivial example, so there's no parallelism or anything. But use your imagination. Pretend it was kernel code instead. So anyways, there's pointers pointing somewhere in the heap. The code should never, ever touch that data in the heap. And if it does... That's a use after free bug. So then we have null being assigned to buff one. So great, that dangling pointer just went away. Now everything is safe with respect to that. But there was this pointer alias that is pointing at the same place. And if a write occurs, if hex 1337 is written to that still dangling pointer, then all of a sudden it is used, this pointer, it is used this memory after it has been freed. And that is the nature of the vulnerability. So if someone else is using memory and all of a sudden some code goes off writing to memory that it's not supposed to have access to, that's going to cause problems. So let's talk about the sword of Damocles. So it's a story of back in the day. This guy right here, Damocles, is talking to this guy right here, the King Dionysus. And he says, man, it's got to be good to be king. All this luxury and wealth. And Dionysus says, oh yeah, it's great to be king. You want to be king for a day? Let me show you what it's like to be king. And so Damocles is like, oh yeah, definitely want to be king. Dionysus sets him up as king and he can see all the luxuries and the fineries. But Dionysus, having pissed off a bunch of people in order to become king, knows that he is always under the threat of violent usurpation. And so he arranged for a sword to be hung over the throne suspended by a single thread of horsehair, thus representing the mortal peril that such rulers always face. So you can't exactly enjoy all of your fun and wealth when you've got the ever-looming danger of death. So, I want you to feel about dangling pointers the same way that Damocles does. Because at the end of the day, isn't the sword of Damocles really just the dangling pointer of Damocles? Yes, it was the fact that it was dangling precariously, looming over him that made it perilous. And that's how I want you to feel about dangling pointers. But Polly the Paranoid Programming Pirate Parrot says, Get out from underneath dangling pointers. Fight back. Cross swords. By always setting pointers to null after you free them. Of course, look out for pointer aliases, mateys. And then, of course, the nerd emoji has to speak up and says, yes, but if the problem is a race condition based use after free, then that may not be sufficient to set the pointer to null. And while the emoji is correct as usual, that doesn't mean you shouldn't set the pointers to null after you free them. That just means you need to actually pay attention to whether or not you're under threat of races. So why would you be under threat of a race? Well, maybe if, if the pointer was a shared resource. So let's imagine you've got kernel thread running along. It frees some pointer foo, and so foo automatically becomes a dangling pointer. Then a context switch occurs, and some attacker-influenced thread is running, and that thread writes to the dangling pointer because that thread is in code that has a use-after-free vulnerability. Well, it's the fact that that was a shared resource shared between these multiple threads, the fact that, you know, if there's parallelism, as there is in kernels, that, you know, anything can preempt, be preempted at any time, well, then that's a situation for race conditions and you have to be concerned with it. 
because when a context switches back and it sets the foo equal to null, yes, you can cross swords with the foo, and yes, you can get rid of that dangling pointer, and that's good, but because of this parallelism and shared resource, you had a raise condition that still meant, even though the programmer was doing the right thing over here and freeing and setting to null, well, too bad, so sad, there was a race condition as well. So again, this does mean you shouldn't set your pointers to null immediately after freeing them. That just means be aware of race conditions, right? That's why we taught you about race conditions before this section. So what are some common causes for use after free? Well, the first one is if the attacker can take an influence and acid pointer, something they fully control, and pass that into free, well, then they essentially have an arbitrary free and they can cause memory to just disappear out from underneath anyone which is going to cause a problem when someone accesses that memory later on, if they can fill in that memory with acid. Another reason is when you have a premature free, usually caused by something like a race condition. And those race condition based premature frees are often caused by reference counting. So that's one of our words of power. So if you see reference count used, it's not always going to be in something like C++. It could be in kernel code that handles garbage collection automatically. So it's the use garbage collection mechanisms just generally expect to have reference counts, which they use in order to figure out when there's no more references to memory. Great, I can free it. And then, of course, there's always logic bugs, which can do things like double freeze or accidentally freeing something before and just literally just have a logic bug where they put a free in there somewhere and then they access the data. And maybe under normal circumstances, that's totally fine because the data, as we've said, doesn't actually change when it's freed. And so maybe the code is fine. But if an attacker can then influence that data to become acid, then the code's not going to be fine. So let's look at the visualization of some of these types. So AC free C, attacker controlled free, see? So in an AC free C, the legitimate code has a pointer to its data, which is gonna become the victim data on the heap, and the attacker induces the calling of free on an acid pointer. So they've got a pointer and they can point it wherever they want if it's an acid pointer, and they just cause the freeing of this victim data. Consequently, this legitimate pointer becomes a dangling pointer, and if the attacker can cause acid to be filled in at that freed location, then any subsequent use of the dangling pointer means that this legitimate code is going to get burnt. Another type was that racy free C. So let's say that you've got some legitimate code interacting with other legitimate code. It's got pointer to this data, and then some more interactions occur. Some more pointers are pointing to this apparently shared resource in these threads are sharing, but then the attacker maliciously interacts with legitimate code in such a way as to cause an erroneous free. And then all of a sudden, boom, that disappears and these pointers become dangling pointers. And once again, if the attacker can fill in acid there and cause any sort of utilization of a dangling pointer, well, the good code is going to get burned. And then finally, double free. See? So this is a situation where there's a bug that causes two instances of free on the same pointer. So some malicious code might interact with the buggy code, and it's got this pointer P at the original data, and it causes a free of P, and this is the first of the two frees, and then boom, that disappears. Now free is a dangling pointer. Then the malicious code maybe interacts with some other code and says, hey, you should really, you know, create an object right now. That object will get created in the gap in the heap that the attacker had presumably heap feng shui'd their way into making. And then they interact with the buggy code again and cause the second free. And then all of a sudden this victim data is going to disappear and the victim, unknown to it, is holding on to what is in reality a dangling pointer. So as always, if the attacker can fill in acid there and cause the utilization of a dangling pointer, that's going to burn the code. Now, I want to make one important caveat about this double free. There is a CWE for a thing called a double free vulnerability, and that is what I would call the traditional double free. So traditionally, there is a situation where if you call free on the same pointer twice, because of the background behavior of the actual heap itself, this can cause corruption of heap metadata, and that can lead to exploitable situations. So 
So I want to be very clear, this double free in the context of use after freeze is not the same thing as a double free where just freeing the same pointer twice just automatically causes heap corruption to the attacker's advantage. That's a nice vulnerability, but we haven't covered that in this class, partially because it's the kind of thing that can just get mitigated away. You fix a heap implementation and it's fixed for everyone everywhere who's using that heap. So it's appropriate and it's in scope. It's something we'll probably talk about in future classes, but it's always gonna be very operating system dependent. It's not a generic thing. Whereas this is potentially a generic thing. Anytime you can find a bug that can allow you to induce two freeze on the same thing, even if the heap implementation has been hardened and it's not causing a traditional double free vulnerability, you can still potentially play, the, play these games in order to cause use after free vulnerabilities. So we could have given you some, um, some trivial code examples to reinforce these, but I tried starting to write some trivial code examples and they got non-trivial very fast. So rather than focusing on toy examples, let's go look at some real examples.